This training video will review the procedures for performing a patient sample using the KeyPath MRSA MSSA Blood Culture Test Kit. Be sure to confirm that the test kit is within its valid dating by confirming the expiration date on the test kit label. The test kit contains 25 reagent pouches and 25 detector pouches. Each reagent pouch contains one identification or ID reaction tube, one resistance susceptibility or RS reaction tube, one ID reaction media bottle, one RS reaction media bottle, and a desiccant. Each detector pouch contains one detector and a desiccant. Each kit contains a package insert which contains detailed instructions for performing the test and a quick reference guide. The testing process can be divided into six simple steps. Test preparation, sample preparation, reconstitution of reaction tubes, sample addition and incubation, detection and interpretation of results. Test preparation. Remove the key path test kit from the refrigerator and remove the reagents you will need for testing. Each test is comprised of one reagent pouch and one detector pouch. Once the tests have been removed, return the kit to the refrigerator immediately for storage. The kit should always remain at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Prior to use, bring the reagent and detector pouches to room temperature. As we have done here, you may leave the detector in its pouch at room temperature during the testing process so it will be ready for use later in the procedure. Sample Preparation The KeyPath test requires sample from an adequately filled blood culture bottle. Bottles should be inspected to ensure that they have been inoculated with approximately 10 milliliters of patient sample. Underfilled bottles may result in false negative results for Staphylococcus aureus identification. Note that the test has been validated for use with blood culture bottles filled between 5 and 12 milliliters of patient sample. The original and fill levels for this bottle were marked for easy reference. This helps the technologist to assess the volume of patient blood in the bottle and to confirm that there is adequate patient blood in the bottle for the key path test. Prior to withdrawing the aliquot, mix the blood culture bottle well. Use your laboratory's approved method for removing the aliquot from the blood culture bottle. Here we are using a syringe to withdraw approximately one milliliter of media which is dispensed into a resealable sterile tube. Any sterile resealable tube may be used. It is important that the tube can be resealed so the aliquot can be properly stored and remixed for use later in the event you wish to retest the sample. Cap the tube and set it aside in a standard tube rack. Positive blood culture specimens can be stored at room temperature for up to 24 hours after positive alarm before testing. Reconstitution of reaction tubes. The first step in preparing the test is to remove the contents from the reagent pouch. Leave the detector sealed in its pouch until later in the procedure. Inspect the base of both the blue and red reaction tubes for evidence of dried pellets. The test should not be used if the dried reagent pellets are missing from either tube. Also inspect the blue and red reaction media bottles for evidence of cloudiness or debris that may indicate media contamination. The test should not be used if either media is suspected of contamination. Label both reaction tubes with sample identification. The next step is to reconstitute both the ID and RS reaction tubes. Add the ID media to the blue ID reaction tube by inverting the media bottle and squeezing the bottle firmly. Release it and squeeze it again leaving a minimal volume in the media bottle. Recap the reaction tube and discard the empty media bottle into a biohazardous waste container. 
Repeat this step using the red RS media bottle and reaction tube. After combining both reagent sets, mix the reaction tubes vigorously by shaking or inverting them several times until the sample is well mixed. Do not vortex. Visually inspect the base of each reaction tube to ensure the pellets have dissolved. If the pellets are not fully dissolved, repeat the mixing process until no dried reagents are visible in either tube. Note that the reconstituted reaction tubes must now be inoculated with specimen and the incubation period started within 25 minutes. Sample addition and incubation. Open both the ID and RS reaction tubes. Mix the positive blood culture aliquot by inverting it several times. Ensure your pipette is set to 10 microliters and select a new sterile pipette tip. Withdraw 10 microliters of the sample by depressing the plunger on the pipette, lowering the pipette into the sample, releasing the plunger, then withdrawing the pipette tip from the sample. Do not replunge the pipetter once in contact with the sample. If a mistake is made, select a new pipette tip prior to reattempting the sample withdrawal. While holding the pipette tip against the inside wall of the blue ID reaction tube, dispense the 10 microliters of sample where the pipette tip meets the surface of the reagent in the tube. To do so, depress the plunger once, hold the plunger in the down position, and withdraw the pipette from the reaction tube. Do not attempt to rinse the pipette tip in the reaction tube by raising and lowering the plunger. After use, the pipette tip will have some sample remaining in the tip, which is expected. Discard the pipette tip into a biohazardous waste container and close the ID reaction tube. Using a new pipette tip, withdraw another 10 microliters of sample and repeat the process in the red RS reaction tube. Once sample has been dispensed in both reaction tubes, shake or invert both tubes several times until the sample is well mixed. Do not vortex. Visually inspect the base of each reaction tube to ensure no pellets remain. If necessary, repeat the mixing process. Place both reaction tubes in the tube rack in an upright position and place them in a standard 35 degrees Celsius ambient air incubator in a stationary position for 5 hours, plus or minus 20 minutes. It is important to incubate the sample for the full 5 hours, plus or minus 20 minutes. Note also that the incubator may have a temperature range of 34 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius and do not use a CO2 incubator. Detection step. After the incubation step, you are ready for the detection step. To use the detector, remove the reaction tubes from the incubator. Bring one pouch containing the detector to room temperature for 15 minutes. Because we removed the detector from the refrigerated test kit at the beginning of the testing procedure, it is now ready for use. Open the detector pouch. Confirm that a desiccant is present in the pouch. Do not use the detector if the desiccant is missing. Inspect the detector and read windows. The surface of the read windows should be smooth and white with no observable defects. The detector must be used within 30 minutes after removing it from the pouch. Place the detector on a flat surface in a well-lit area with minimal air currents. Remix the reaction tubes by vigorously shaking or inverting several times until the sample is well mixed. Again, do not vortex. Remove the cap from the blue reaction tube. Using the blue transfer pipette, depress the top bulb fully Lower the pipette into the blue reaction tube and withdraw sample by slowly releasing the bulb. The bulb in the body of the pipette is an overflow reservoir. When adequate sample has been withdrawn, a small amount of liquid will be present in this reservoir. Transfer the contents to the ID sample well by squeezing the top bulb on the pipette. The ID sample well 
is marked by the blue ring on the detector. You may squeeze the bulb more than once to ensure the contents are fully dispensed. Bubbles may form in the sample well and do not affect the performance of the test. The pipette is designed to deliver the correct sample volume to the detector and any excess volume will remain in the overflow reservoir. Do not deposit any sample in the adjoining sample well or onto the reed windows. Discard the pipette when finished and recap the reaction tube. Repeat these steps using the red transfer pipette to dispense sample from the red reaction tube into the red RS sample well. Retain both reaction tubes at room temperature until the test is complete. Using a timer, let the detector run for a minimum of 20 minutes, but no longer than 30 minutes after sample addition. Read the results on the detector during this 20 to 30 minute window. Do not read the results before or after the 20 to 30 minute time window. Interpretation of results. Interpret results by evaluating the read windows for the presence or absence of detection lines. Detection lines should be discrete, continuous, horizontal lines that extend the width of the read window. Any light pink to dark red or purple colored continuous lines that span the entire read window are positive and should be interpreted. The backgrounds of the ID and RS read windows should be white or have a homogeneous light pink hue free from spots or streaks that could interfere with interpretation of results. Interpret the ID read window first. Both the alignment line A and the control line C must be visible in the ID read window for a valid result. If either line is not visible, the test is invalid. If this occurs, you may repeat the detection step using the retained sample from the ID and RS reaction tubes and using a different detector from the same kit or a test kit with the same lot number. If the A and C lines are visible, read the test line T. If no line is visible in the T position, Staphylococcus aureus was not detected. In this case, the test is complete and the RS window is not interpreted. The result is not Staph aureus. If a line is present in the T position, this indicates the presence of Staphylococcus aureus. In this case, you move on to interpret the RS read window on the right side of the detector. Note that line intensities will vary and are not relevant when interpreting results. The A and C control lines may be darker than the T test lines. Do not compare or consider line intensities when interpreting results. Any light pink to dark red purple continuous line is positive. Interpreting the RS read window. When the ID read window indicates staph aureus, the RS read window on the right side of the detector is interpreted. First, confirm the control line C on the RS read window is visible. There should not be a line at the alignment line A position. If the control line C is not visible or a line has formed at the alignment line A position, the test is invalid. Again, if this occurs, you may repeat the detection step using the retained sample from the ID and RS reaction tubes and using a different detector from the same test kit or a test kit with the same lot number. Next, interpret the test line T. If a line is present in the T position, this indicates the presence of a methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. No visible line at the test line position indicates the presence of a methicillin-sensitive Staphylococcus aureus, or MSSA. The final results are either MRSA or MSSA. Again, remember not to compare line intensities and that any light pink to dark red or purple line is positive. After interpreting and recording the results, dispose of the detector.